Hi guys, welcome to Office Bloke React. I'm Office Bloke Dave. I'm Office Bloke Mike. When you're ready, I'm Office Bloke Daz. Collectively ready, Office Bloke. Was your time delay there from that to there? <laughs> that was miles away. <laughs> it, was, it was audio issues again, wasn't it? Uh, we are the Office Blokes and we are after a new intro for our little channel. So that little intro you've just watched, we want it completely overhauling replacing whatever you want to do with it same music same music but if you want to edit the music if you want to beatbox the music if mm. you want to uh whatever you want to do just figure something out yeah. uh submissions office blokes react at gmail.com we'll do a video showing them we'll do a poll we'll have final say and then there'll be a prize for the winner so there you go we nice. slide that down could. the poll yeah there you go cheers for that one guys we'll see you on the next one <laughs> uh right then true facts wild pigs this channel was funny is this the guy that did the ticks yeah, uh, right. didn't exactly smash it numbers Frank. wise, but it was so good to react funny. to. Like I, I enjoyed it. It's so really much. funny. So, yeah, let me check. Sometimes it it's just for our enjoyment. Absolutely, yeah, and that's why. Yeah, that's, that's all the that, time. That's it has, to be fair. Yeah, well, we try. Yeah, <laughs> that tick one was great. It's creepy as fuck though, but it was good. Let's do it then. True facts: Wild pigs. So there's a cheetah on the hunt, right? And she spots some prey and she's like, whatever that is looks delicious and she starts chasing it. They try a little distraction tactic, but she's not having it, stays on after the first one. And then bang, sharp right, and the cheetah's like, holy crap, this thing can run. But now they're on a straightaway and she's like, screw this, I'm the fastest land animal. And she's right up on it and she looks over and ah! What the fuck? Look at her. <laughs> She's like, get me out of here. And now the warthog's chasing the cheetah until the cheetah stops and says, what the hell was that? And her buddy comes over and says, what happened? And she's like, I don't know, but that thing looked like a baby elephant trying to kick its way out of a cow's face. Meanwhile, the warthog's like, suck it, cheetah. But let's back up a bit. Warthogs are part of a group of animals in the family Suidae. You've heard of pigs, right? Well, they're in that family too in the genus Sus. There's like a billion pigs and no one seems worried about it. What happened was they used to be wild pigs. But then a group of them said, we're gonna cozy up to the humans. They seem nice, what could possibly go wrong? So the humans asked, what do you like to eat? The pigs said, everything. Everything? Really? What about shit? Yep, we're not mad at it. And that gave the humans an idea. This is called a pig toilet. It's an outhouse on top of a pigsty, and the pigs eat the poop and the people eat the pigs. It's like that Circle of Life song in The Lion King, but reimagined by a German fetish pornographer. Anyway, now... Dave's gone off bacon all of a sudden, right? Pork chops and... I, I, I know. Yeah. I know pigs eat everything, but isn't that just a recipe for, like, mad pig disease or something? And that wasn't it? Mad cow disease was cows eating offal. Like, they were, they were putting that, offal in the... the I just know I got steaks for a fraction of the price. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to say. I can't remember what it was now, actually. I don't know for definite, but there was one where they were feeding an animal awful, and it was, yeah. that was causing something, mm. wasn't it? And they had to destroy loads. Yeah, could have been. Mm. But that's where the phrase happy as a pig in shit comes from, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Over a billion of them, and they're up to something, because they're smart. But listen about the mazes. Scientists keep putting pigs in mazes, and then they're like, oh my god, the pigs solved the maze. But meanwhile, have you ever been in a forest? It's like nature's Ikea. It's impossible not to get lost. But pigs do fine in there. They can even sense the direction of Earth's magnetic field. So they're probably doing the mazes easily and saying the humans seem smart, but their architecture is really unnecessarily complicated. We'll have to redo it when we take over. And that's what's happening, people. If you need proof, look at this. They only use two tippy toes on each leg to walk. So why do they need the other two in back? I'll tell you why. They're keeping them around to operate our computers and machinery. <laughs> and if you didn't even hear what I just said, because you're all like, look at the cute pig with the soccer ball, well, you're falling for their scheme. They made their way in the storybooks and the motion pictures. Look at the piglet. Look at the piglet. Never mind, there's a billion of them. And here's the deal with the piglets. There's a dark side there. Sure, they're cute, but piglets are one of the only mammals to be born with weapons designed to be used against their own siblings. They're born with two pairs of canines and two pairs of incisors, top and bottom. These teeth are angled in such a way that they create a vicious side bite, perfect for lacerating someone's face who's going after a nipple with your name on it. And that's what they do. They fight for a nipple and then they stick with it. And they have to do it fast, too. The first 24 hours or so are crucial. That's when the mother's milk can contains colostrum, which the babies need to establish their immune system. You know what else the babies get from their mother? A bunch of healthy gut bacteria. You know how they get it? They eat her poop. So while you were all cuddled up in a onesie getting a lullaby, the pig babies are getting bit in the face and eating shit. Put that in the prequel to Charlotte's Web. Anyway, even if you do get a nipple, they're not all created equal. 
The ones up front near the head, they work better, and the stronger piglets usually get those. The ones in the back are janky, like when you try to get soda from a dispenser that's running out. You know, when it sort of sputter farts a couple drops into your cup. The runts are back there, sucking the hind tit. And sometimes they need a little extra. Females in the same group will often let piglets from another mother suckle. Think Airbnb, but for nipples. What's crazy is this might result in their own biological child starving to death. It's a whole Game of Thrones thing, and the weak ones don't make it. Now, if you think that being a pig baby is hardcore, you should see the hoopla that the parents go through to make them. These are Suscrofa, the wild pigs in the lineage that gave us the domesticated ones. The females live in groups of about three to five along with their young children. The males kind of do their own thing until mating season. It happens once a year, so you can imagine there's some pent-up sexual energy. As far as I know, they don't know how to masturbate, and yes, I googled it. I'm googling it right now. If you're an advertiser trying to target me, those are the kinds of keywords you're going to have to use. Anyway, around mating season, the males go through some changes. They basically stop eating, which is weird considering what's ahead of them. But scientists think that it... Oh, sorry. But scientists think it might have something to... <laughs> <laughs> what a scientist. <laughs> oh, wow. This guy's oh, sense of humor is amazing. Like brilliant, it's funny. so good. Yeah. With all the hormones and the saliva. And there's a lot of saliva. Now, this isn't your mom's saliva. This is the real stuff, and it's got some stank to it. This saliva contains sexy pheromones that are powerful enough to advance the onset of puberty in young females who get a whiff. One of these pheromones is endosterol, which is also found in truffles. Truffles are like underground mushrooms that give off a smell to entice animals to dig them up and spread their seeds or spores. A pig can smell one of these at a depth of three feet. So people assume that the truffle was tricking the pig by smelling like sex. Sort of like if there was a flavored Dorito and you lost one on the couch cushion. You'd be digging around in there. But then, of course, a scientist had to do an experiment to see if it was true. And it wasn't. It was a different compound, dimethyl sulfide, that the pigs were smelling for. And once again, science ruined a perfectly good story. Anyway, I digress. So this male, who is very horny and hungry at this point, tries to find a group of females to wipe his spit on with the hopes of getting them horny too, and then it's a party. The problem is there's other males doing the same thing, so it's lucky they have the padding. During mating season, the males develop this thick layer of tissue, almost like cartilage, under their skin on their backs and shoulders. This helps because the males beat the living sh** out of each other. A lot of their fighting involves jockeying for position and then lacerating the side of their opponent. They've got good weapons for it, too. On each side, both of their canines point upwards. Wow. This is because their alveolar process, or bony thing that contains the tooth socket, is rotated outwards. On the warthog, it's even more pronounced. But of course, because nature's crazy, there's a suet that took this to the extreme. The Babarusa broke off from the other suets about 12 million years ago. They wound up on these islands in Indonesia, and life is good. No natural predators, a good amount of food. They only have two or three babies at a time, so the siblings aren't trying to kill each other so they've had some nice quality time to evolve into their true form, which happens to be goth. Demon goth. They look crazy. Sort of a Satan's unicorn vibe. Their alveolar process has rotated so far that their teeth emerge through the skin on their face. They don't stop growing either, and if they're not tended to, they can curl around and pierce the skin again. Babarusa not impressed with your tongue piercing. For a while, people thought that the upper tusks might play a defensive role in combat, sort of like a face protector. But the extreme rotation of the alveolar process means that the roots of these teeth are quite shallow, making them too brittle to be effective. And their fights, to be honest, look a bit more like macho hugging. Oh yeah, you call that a hug? How about this one? Yeah, it's tight. A tight, warm, <laughs> fuzzy hug. Warthogs fight more like those bros who get up all into each other's face and get really close so they're almost kissing, but not kissing. But they could kiss if they wanted to. Unlike the Bambarusa, the warthog has plenty of natural predators. So the warthog evolved these long legs so they could run. The problem is that moved their face farther away from the ground, which is where their food is. So when they eat, they have to kneel down. But it's not regular kneeling, it's wrist kneeling. Here, flop both of your wrists down like you're pretending to be a bunny. That's what they're walking on, the backs of their wrists. They're creative, they have solutions for all sorts of things. For example, look at all those bugs. That must be annoying. Well, when it's wet out, they take a mud bath. It's cooling and it keeps the bugs and ticks and other parasites away. But in the dry season, there's not enough mud to go around, so they figured something else out. They enlist the mongooses. Wait, Jenny, is it mongooses or mongeese? No, not monkeys, Jerry, monkeys. All right. They enlist many a mongoose to eat their dicks. Well, now you made that sound inappropriate, Jerry. Think, Jerry. The mongoose is not eating the warthog's dick. Hmm. Well, yes, they do get close to it, don't they? 
That's trust right there. I mean, that's the definition of trust, isn't it? How close will you allow someone's teeth to your genitals? Well, that's flattering, Jerry, but I, I meant it as a rhetorical question. No, I don't want to answer it for you. Fine, three inches. Well, I know that's farther than what you said, Jerry. Well, it's close. Jerry, you don't use the bleep button just because you have hurt feelings. No, don't do it, Jerry. Brilliant. Yeah. It's hard to pause at any point and comment because it's just so mesmerizing. It goes pretty well, doesn't it? The voiceover is so good. It's probably the best voiceover I've ever heard of. Of anything, I mean, yeah. the script right now is absolutely yeah. amazing, isn't it? it yeah. It's absolutely top drawer, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. It's not just like throwing together that, it's no. absolutely really it's so clever, it really is. The proper it's vicious, good. though, aren't they? they? They kill people like wild boar. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they pretty be. common, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, they eat Stick anything, clear. normally, like you say. It's uh, mm. that's where you uh, if you want someone gone, that's where you put them. Harry the Hatch, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good though that brilliant. Yeah, yeah enjoyed fantastic that. Fantastic channel. It's yeah, amazing, it's superb, isn't it? Yeah. That are my favourite thing about pigs that you didn't really touch on there is that they're really tasty. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah. Right, yeah. Good point. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that too. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, Cheers. guys. Cheers.